Hello everyone, you join me floating peacefully in orbit aboard the Lathe Base Camp space station that serves as the orbital base of operations for the Life on Lathe mission. What is the Life on Lathe mission? Well, it's trying to learn as much as we can about the very mysterious moon of jewel, Lathe. Why does it have breathable oxygen? Why does it have liquid water? It's so far away from the sun, it doesn't really make any sense. Now, during a routine scan of the surface, the scanners aboard the station picked up a very strange source of radiation. It's coming from something that's located on the mainland west of Laun Island, which is the location of the surface base and rover. So we sent the Kerbals aboard the rover to go and have a look, see if they can see anything. But as you can see, nothing really visible there. So we had to go and investigate a little bit further than this. Of course, the rover can't reach the mainland since it's not amphibious, so we're gonna have to send the VTOL. The electric VTOL seaplane is currently stationed next to the submersible laboratory, and so we need to get it clear of the lab in order to begin our takeoff, because it's, I haven't flown this thing for a while. In fact, it's been almost two years since I've piloted this vessel, so I'm a little bit rusty. It's not the easiest craft in the world to fly, so you just gonna have to bear with me on this, but let's see if we can do this anyway. I'm going to flip the wings up to the vertical takeoff position. Do a quick little check. The, the, it's a bit rough, the weather. <laughs> uh, not the calmest of conditions for takeoff, but we're going to throttle up. Just keeping an eye on the deploy limit of those propeller blades, which you can control using the J and L buttons on the keyboard. That's just what I've bound the action groups to. Gradually building up the deploy limit as the ascent continues. And then I'm just going to flip this thing into horizontal flight mode and didn't didn't do a great job. I just sort of made the whole thing do this weird backflip maneuver. It was like the hinge was flipping the fuselage of the aircraft into a horizontal position rather than flipping the wings into a horizontal position. But we, we made it. Everything was fine. So let us move on. Once in horizontal flight, I like to just uh, increase the deploy angle of the blades until they're about sort of 50 degrees ish. From there, we can cruise at a pretty nice speed. You can see we've flown over, literally flown over, I guess, Laun Island. I am playing the footage back very fast in order to spare you the boredom of sitting through the entire flight in real time like I had to. An hour over the mainland, we're going to see if we can scan the ground, see if we can find anything that looks out of place that could be responsible for the mysterious radiation that was picked up by the scanners on board the orbital station. Don't know about you guys, but I can't see anything yet. So I'm just gonna slow down our cruise speed a little bit and have a little dive down, see if we can spot anything at all. Oh, what is that? Let's just uh, swoop the plane down, have a look through the front window. Is that... Is that some sort of skeleton? Nah, it can't be. It can't possibly be a skeleton. We're gonna have to just throttle up our propellers and uh, get to landing. Now, I'm not gonna bother landing this thing as a VTOL because, as I said, I haven't flown this thing in a year and it's it's actually quite difficult to land vertically. Uh, I've done a video on this craft, like a dedicated video for it, where I showcased its ability to land and take off horizontally and vertically. Just watch that if you want proof that it can manage this. This is not the point of this video. The point is, mis is investigating this mysterious object here, which is gradually coming into view. And you know, that does look like a rib cage and a skull. But uh, I think I think that might be a humpback whale. Is that the skeleton of a humpback whale? What could that be doing on Lathe? How did it get here? And this is most mysterious, guys. I think we ought to disembark the aircraft and take a look up close in person. Or in Kerbal, I guess. Because, right, they're not, they're not people, are they? <laughs> they are adorable little space frogs. Yeah, let's just run over there, uh, Lennon Kerman, and take a look. I think there is really no doubt here. This is definitely the skeleton of a humpback whale here, in the middle of the land, on Lathe. And there seems to be a broken vase of petunias as well which uh, doesn't really make a great deal of sense to me. Mm, it doesn't look like there's anything else here by this skeleton. And yeah, it's uh, it's solid. It's not We're not just uh, experiencing some sort of mirage. Hmm. I think what we need to do is extract a bone sample. Now, we have extraction equipment, but it's on Laun Island. We can't ship it over. I didn't actually build the capability of airlifting stuff with the VTOL aircraft, which is probably a design oversight, to be honest. I should have probably given it the ability to carry stuff between the islands of Lathe, but you live and learn, don't you? We're going to have to build a dedicated mining unit, send it out to Lathe, and uh, see if we can extract some of the bone from that skeleton, see if we can learn anything that'll help us with our quest to learn about Lathe and uh, 
that's it actually. That's the whole that's the whole point of life on Lathe, is just to learn about Lathe. It's been going on for like two years. I'm really it's like the most infrequent series I've ever made. But it is, it's continuing today. <laughs> and as you can see, the uh, the design of the vehicle is actually pretty much done. It's a fairly simple machine, but it gets the job done. I'm adding these hinge pieces here just to uh, absorb the impact of the landing in case, just to avoid risking breaking the wheels on touchdown. So we're doing a quick drop test on Kerbin. Seems to work pretty well. We fold them away and yep, it drives really, really nicely. So back to what I was talking about with was uh, the mission at hand. This series is called Life on Lathe, not because we're trying to find alien life on the planet Lathe. It's due to the fact that we're basically colonizing it. We are putting Kerbal life on Lathe, colonizing the moon. But this is a... Uh, this could change the meaning of things entirely. Is there actually alien life on Lathe? That's not as catchy of a name for a series, but I mean, this is a... Uh, well... I'm... I'm confused. So in order to sort out my confusion and hopefully get to the bottom of things, we're going to send that rover to Lathe, extract material from the mysterious Lathe whale skeleton, and see if we can't figure this out. So here is the rocket launching. Playing the footage back pretty fast because really, you've all seen a rocket launching Kerbal Space Program by now, I'm assuming. So we're just going to fly through it. The rocket itself, nothing too special, to be honest. It's like a was like an SLS with a really long fairing and no solid rocket motors. In other words, they're nothing like an SLS rocket, but it's orange, eh? And it's got four RS-25 analogs in the first stage, and the first stage is expendable. So, I don't know, it's kind of a mix of both really, isn't it? Gonna let that uh, first stage get nice and clear of the second stage before igniting our second stage engine, which is a Rhino engine. And we're going to carry on coasting towards low Earth orbit. Oh, low, low Kerbin orbit. Oh, I finally reached that point in my career where I've, I've now gone from wanting to default to saying low Kerbin orbit to low Earth orbit. Because obviously now I do a lot more space news than I do Kerbal Space Program content. So I'm, I'm used to saying low Earth orbit now. I remember when I first started doing space news videos, I would always have to sort of stop myself from saying low Kerbin orbit instead of low Earth orbit. And here we are. We've come full circle. I'm now starting to say low Earth orbit more than I would say low Kerbin orbit, I guess. Um, I'm only really going into this now because I can't be bothered to stop the commentary and get rid of that little outtake. And it provides a bit more, I don't know, a bit more of a bit of a cash conversation to the to the whole video thing. Like the first part of this video was obviously a little bit more scripted. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't scripted, but it was a bit more, I don't know, a bit more of a performance. And of course, my space news videos are uh, are very very scripted. So this is kind of a nice break from that. Just a little bit of a heart to heart content creator to content consumer sort of thing. If you like this sort of thing, by the way, I do a lot more commentaries on my second channel now. I've been doing a lot of cycling content. Uh, even if you don't care about cycling, I do like commentaries on over those videos, and that's more of a conversational tone like, like this is right now. So maybe check that out if you want to check it out. I've performed the first part of our burn to jewel, by the way, using our second stage, because it, has way, it had way more Delta V than I thought it would. To be honest, I didn't actually test this rocket or vehicle at all before rolling the cameras. I just built it in the vehicle assembly building and I thought, yeah, that looks about right, and then launched it. Turns out I had way too much Delta V, but it did actually serve a good purpose uh, later on, which I will I will get into when we get to it, but I'm talking about the Delta V of this stage here. Far, far, far more Delta V than it, uh, than it would ever need, but again, it does serve, it does end up coming in useful later on, and I will talk about that when we get there. Now I'm just going to set my better time warp to uh, have fast physics time warp because it's a pretty long burn, especially with just the one nuclear engine. So uh, using the mod better time warp, we can actually have faster physics uh, time warp options. So you can go faster than times four. Uh, faster than sort of times ten can start resulting in the Kraken attacking you. So I just sort of leave it at times ten for more complicated craft like this. Small things like ion probes, you can definitely get it faster, like times twenty possibly. But for this sort of craft, there's a lot of moving parts. I left it at times ten. And there is our dual encounter. When encountering Lathe, I usually just get a rough dual encounter. I don't worry about kind of the exact uh, inclination or periapsis height, that sort of thing when getting the dual encounter from low curb in orbit. I just get a dual encounter knowing that we're going to do a mid-course transfer, uh, uh, mid-course correction burn anyway. Uh, one of the reasons why I did stuff a lot of Delta V into this craft, uh, 
I didn't realise I was stuffing in this much, but I did intentionally put in quite a lot of range because I couldn't be bothered to do a tie low gravity assist to get an encounter with Lathe. I thought, you know what, let's just go straight to Lathe, get an orbit from there using our engines because I don't want this video to go on too long. I know with this whole, the whole intro I just did, it's going to be a fairly long one potentially if I don't take shortcuts here and there. So I decided to cut down on the video length by doing this. And also it makes it a bit more a bit more easy for me, a bit more fun, and I'm very lazy. So it, it was a win-win-win-win situation, hopefully. And there is our lathe uh, encounter there. Not quite the same as uh, the, the maneuver node said it would turn out as, but um, honestly, I don't really mind. Again, we've got plenty of fuel to play around with. We're not really on a budget here. And uh, yeah, just making a maneuver node to get our perhaps is a little bit lower. I'm also reducing the inclination of our orbit around lathe, but not entirely. I'm not making it entirely equatorial because we are aiming for the lathe whale skeleton, which isn't exactly along the equator, I don't believe. And so it's usually easier to encounter specific points on a planet or moon surface when you're at a slight inclination. That's usually what I aim for in my Blunderbirds series of videos. Okay, so here we are uh, performing our retrograde burn at Lathe and uh, yeah, just, just capturing, I guess. Know what else there is to say? <laughs> A big reason why it's important I get into a low lathe orbit before entering its atmosphere is because we don't have any heat shields or any real means of shielding the craft from the heat heating effects of atmospheric entry. So I want to be having coming in as slow as I possibly can, which means coming in from a nice low lathe orbit with relatively low eccentricity. So that's why I'm meticulously lowering my lathe orbital height. And I'd say that's a pretty safe, you know, altitude to descend from. So now I'm just going to time warp around until the lathe skeleton, which is obviously the place we're aiming for, is, is on the daylight side of the moon, just so, you know, it's a bit more viewable, both for me when I'm trying to find the landing spot I need to get to, and also for you guys, you've got slightly more, I don't know, visualness. Um, what's the word? More, st you can see, you can see better, basically, through the visual medium that is this video. So here we are performing our retrograde burn. I'm going to burn a little bit longer than the maneuver node. I mostly just set the maneuver node itself up just to get my trajectory correct so that I'll be passing directly over the target or, you know, roughly passing over. Now, do you recall earlier in the video when I said that having lots of extra delta V in this stage will come in useful? Well, this is it. So that stage is really, really heavy because of all the extra fuel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it attached and then as soon as I get to where I want to kind of start dropping down and stop moving across the surface of lathe horizontally, we can stage it. We suddenly lose loads of momentum and stop moving forward quite so much and start just dropping down uh, basically pretty much where we dropped the stage. That was the uh, that was the theory there. And also it acted as a really good sort of ballast to keep the craft safe during atmospheric entry because the rover wasn't really subjected to the brunt of the aerodynamic forces. That was mostly being taken by the fuel tanks and engine and it wouldn't have been the end of the world if any of those got destroyed because we didn't really need them. And there we are, touchdown. Again, I used those crocodile hinges to make sure that our wheels don't get damaged on the touchdown and then we can just drive towards our target which is only 3.4 kilometers away so a fairly short drive for this rover i'm going to speed the footage right up so you'd have to endure the boredom that was me just driving towards the skeleton although i guess it was quite fun in in its own little way but probably more fun for me as the player of the game for someone watching it might not be the most exciting thing in the world so that's why i'm speeding the footage up and there it is looming interview the whale and that mysterious smashed pot of petunias next to it we're gonna be uh, hopefully able to gain a lot of insight using the equipment on this rover here so let's get uh, a kerbal out of the plane and get her into the rover she won't be actually driving the rover the rover is autonomous but she can be in there to sort of monitor the drill make sure the equipment is working as not as uh, you know is working correctly she's going to make sure the drill doesn't overheat or anything she's got loads of hours in payday too so she knows about how to maintain drills during drilling operations and making sure they don't overheat or jam or you know encounter any other errors that drills uh, frequently encounter i suppose <laughs> anyway we're just carefully driving across the surface now towards the head of the whale i retracted the ladder just there to make sure it didn't get caught on the surface of lathe and now that we're in position we can extend that drill and begin bone extraction we hope we can learn about the origins of this skeleton and in fact we can use the half-life of the bone marrow and some other fancy science to reconstruct this whale's final moments and figure out what exactly happened so there we are we've extracted material from where the brain of the whale was we can hopefully glean what its final thoughts might have been uh, before it you know ended up as a skeleton so i'm just gonna 
extend the drill and transfer the data into the aircraft and then we're going to fly the aircraft back to the Laun Island outpost where we can study the data in slightly more detail than we can on board the aircraft. But I'm getting I'm getting some results through now, so let's see what went through this whale's head before it met its demise. I have a complete record of its thoughts from the moment it began its life till the moment it ended it. Ah, what's happening, it thought. Uh, excuse me, who am I? Hello? Why am I here? What's my purpose in life? What do I mean by who am I? Calm down, get a grip. Oh, this is an interesting sensation. What is it? It's a sort of yawning, tingling sensation in my... My, well, I suppose I'd better start finding names for things if I want to make any headway in what, for the sake of what I shall call an argument, I shall call the world. So, let's call it my stomach. Good. Ooh, it's getting quite strong. And hey, what's about this whistling, roaring sound going past what I'm suddenly going to call my head? Perhaps I can call that wind. Is that a good name? It'll do. Perhaps I can find a better name for it later when i found out what it's for. It must be something very important because there certainly seems to be a hell of a lot of it. Hey, what's this thing? This, let's call it a tail. Yeah, tail. Hey, I can really, really thrash it about pretty good, can't I? Wow, wow, that feels great. Doesn't seem to achieve very much, but hopefully I'll find out what it's for later on. Now, have I built up any coherent picture of things yet? No, never mind. Hey, this is really exciting. So much to find out about. So much to look forward to. I'm quite dizzy with anticipation. Or is it the wind? There really is a lot of that now, isn't it? And wow, hey, what's this thing suddenly coming towards me very fast? Very, very fast. So big and flat and round. It needs a big, wide-sounding name like Ow, Ound, Round, Ground. That's it. That's a good name. Ground. I wonder if it'll be friends with me. And the rest, after a sudden wet thud, was silence. Curiously enough, the only thing that went through the mind of the bowl of petunias as it fell was, oh no, not again. Now, I would speculate that if we knew exactly why the Bowl of Petunias had thought this, then we would know a lot more about the nature of the universe than we do now. But it seems like the final thoughts of the whale haven't really answered any questions that I set out to answer in this video. All we know is that it seems to have just materialised spontaneously above the surface of Lathe and then fell to the ground and died. Maybe we'll gain some more insight in the laboratory in the Laun Island outpost, which we have now, of course, arrived at. Uh, the plane's propellers seem to have glitched out a little bit, haven't they? But no worry, we'll get our Kerbal into the lab, carrying the samples and see if we can make any more sense of the data there. I have actually just noticed that our Lathe space shuttle that's designed to get Kerbal's to and from the surface of Lathe appears to have despawned, so I may have loaded the wrong particular quick save when filming this episode of Life on Lathe, so I'll probably have to do some proverbial mining off screen and just put that Lathe space shuttle back next to the outpost. But you guys don't have to watch that, it will just be there for the next episode of Life on Lathe, whenever that may be. I know it's been a bit of a while since the last Life on Lathe episode, but hopefully I'll think of another good thing to do with this series sooner rather than later. If you guys have any ideas for future Life on Lathe episodes, then let me know in the comments down below. And hey, drop a like if you enjoyed the video. Thanks so much to my patrons and channel members who help support this content that I make. There's two videos, uh, suggestions on screen for you as well. Hopefully they're good picks. Uh, they were just chosen by the YouTube machine bots. Brrr, I don't know. Anyway, that was it. Thank you for watching, everyone. Goodbye.